Hello, Familia. So this is 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Um, since I had finished um, Acts, I thought I would go to the very next chapter after Romans, which is 1 Corinthians. So here we are. It says this, Paul called an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will and Sothenes, our brother, to God's church at Corinth to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus and called as saints, with all those in every place who call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and shalom from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In his precious and holy name I pray. I always thank my God for you because of God's grace given to you in Christ Jesus that by him you were enriched in everything, in all speech, in all knowledge. In this way, the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you. Glory, hallelujah. So that you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you will be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. You were called by him into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I urge you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, that there be no divisions among you, and that you be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers, by members of Chloe's household, that there is rivalry among you. What I'm saying is this, each of you says, I'm with Paul, or I'm with Apollos, or I'm with Cephas, or I'm with Christ. Is Christ divided? Was it Paul who was crucified for you? Or were you baptized in Paul's name? Thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say you were baptized in my name. I did, in fact, baptize the whole household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't know if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to evangelize, not with clever words, so that the cross of Christ would not be emptied of its effect. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be so, Father God. <laughs> For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But it is God's power to us who are being saved. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will set aside the understanding of the experts. It's in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14. Glory be to God. Where is the philosopher? Where is the scholar? Where is the debater of this age? Hasn't God made the world's wisdom foolish? For since in God's wisdom, the world did not know God through wisdom, God was pleased to save those who believe through the foolishness of the message preached. That's me. I totally believe. Glory be to God. All glory be to God. Because I didn't for most of my life. For the Jews ask for signs and Greek, and the Greeks ask for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Yet to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's power and God's wisdom because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Brothers, Familia, consider your calling. Not many are wise from a human perspective. Definitely not. Not many are powerful? Definitely not. Not many of noble birth? Definitely not. Instead, God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. I'm so weak, and I am so, just so weak, <laughs> and so foolish. And so I give all glory to God that I get to say that. <laughs> that God chose me because I was foolish and because I was weak. Thank you, Father. It's inexplicable. I know, I know. 
But he says it. Glory be to God. God has, verse 28, God has chosen what is insignificant and despised in the world, what is viewed as nothing, to bring to nothing what is viewed as something, so that no one can boast in his presence. But it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became God-given wisdom for us, our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, in order that as it is written, the one who boasts must boast in the Lord. Glory be to God. That is in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. Verse 24. Glory be to God, I do boast in the Lord, and I do boast in my weaknesses, and I do boast in all my troubles and all my hardships, because when I am weak, he is strong, and his power is seen in me. When I can have shalom, and I can have joy, and I can share his word and boast in its truth, that's a miracle of the Lord right there, Familia. <laughs> It shouldn't be, but glory be to God that he chose what others look down upon to be the righteousness in Yeshua Messiah. Glory be to God. May we all be able to confidently boast in the Lord. And boast in his kindness and boast in his goodness and boast in his love and boast in his truth and his grace and his mercy and his compassion. And how he's slow to anger and so very patient with us. May we be able to boast in him alone more and more every single day in the mighty name of Jesus. May he bless us to know this deeply in our hearts more and more every single day in the mighty name of Jesus I pray. And I give all glory, honor, and thanksgiving and praise to our Father in heaven. Because without him, I would be less than nothing. Exactly. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah and amen. Bye, familia.